Yeah. Okay, take it away. Thank you. Hi, uh, um, so I'm assigned to go through chapter 18 of Missing Values. So here we go. So the, the book starts with uh, showing how we have encountered pre uh, missing values in previous chapters. So one of them was in the data visualization chapter, but we do some scatter plots and then a warning was given that we have missing uh, two rows. And if we were to filter the data to find out which uh, of the columns have an NA value, we can see that two of them are missing and that is causing the warning message to pop up over here. We also see them in the uh, flights data set where we try to summarize the data. So we take the flights data sets and we group by month and then we try to take the mean of the uh, departure delay, which I kind of put it as average delay. <laughs> and then we realized that the data was missing in a, and was all missing. And then the book says that because there were any uh, missing values, so it causes the output to be missing. And we can resolve them by setting an additional argument in the mean function, which is uh, and in this uh, any dot rm and if we set it to true then the miss the mean values uh, will come back to us and then there's another one where we try to do a logical operators on missing values and this is just taken from previous chapters again and we just try to recall that if we want to compare a missing value we always return an na uh, most of the time, and to check whether it's uh, missing, we have a function called this.na. So this chapter tries to cover more information of what we can do with missing values, and they try to categorize the missing values to three groups. They, they call it explicit, implicit, and empty groups. So explicit missing values are values that we know that they were all missing because they tell us very clearly that it's missing, perhaps in a column and then you see a blank in one of the rows, well, that's explicit. Well, implicit missing values are more tricky to handle because usually they represent by missing columns or, and you may need some domain experience to know that they are missing. And another one was to deal with empty groups, which this can be quite tricky as well, especially when you want to make plots out of them. So the book starts with explicit missing values. So it's usually when data is entered by hand, you will have some missing values like this. Sometimes they were really missing. Other times, uh, if it's a time series uh, data set, sometimes they were left missing because they actually mean that they are referring to the same person and you don't want to type it twice or three times because it was very uh, tedious from a data entry perspective. So they just conveniently leave it as missing like that. So to deal with these kinds of fill in or fill up uh, cases, there's a function called tidy, uh, from tidy R package called fill and we can uh, put that fail function and this column just says that you want to do it for every single column and then we tell the fail function like which direction will the fail down fill up as so we just put it as down and so it fills down the missing values like it's kind of similar to how like excel does when you try to fill the missing cells in a very fast way Uh, let's get open this yeah, and just to let you know that you can also uh fill in different directions as well. It does not have to be up, just always be down. You can also fill up or fill in both directions if necessary. So if the missing values are are usually uh truly missing, we can 
we may want to replace them by some fixed value if in, in this case you can use the collase uh, function to replace them by what values is necessary. So if it is able to take an integer, in this case, it will fill up the missing values with that integer that you have placed, you have uh, inserted in. At the same time, you can also use this to fill in uh, missing values between two different vectors as well. So it's kind of like to merge them and to help to fill in the missing values like this. Uh, however, uh, this is not from the book, but for me, usually I will use this function called replace underscore na from the tidy r function because it can like, help me to fill in like multiple columns because I don't really know how to fill in multiple columns using this function. But for, for this function, I like, from tidy r, I have like, some ideas of how it can be done. This. So what I, I just create one missing data set and then I just use this replace underscore NA with uh with values that is kind of like same as the column names. So all the NAs become zero and all the Ys become unknown, something like that. So uh concrete uh sometimes you also have uh some concrete values that actually also represents a missing value. So for example, like if you have a column that is you know it has to be always positive, like like a, a lab measurement or like height or weight, and then you suddenly see a negative values in that column, usually it could mean a missing values uh most of the time, uh, but it's also best to verify with your collaborators who is who is giving you this data set. But most of the time, it's usually to represent a missing value. So they can display missing values like negative values or nine nine. Uh, but it's always best to check with your collaborators. And after that, uh, if they create these missing values in a consistent way and uh, you can actually try to do like a, a shortcut like for example like for the read data set for read our package the read underscore csv has like a function called na which you can input different types of missing values whether it's empty string uh, 99 and so far and so forth however if you want to do like specific columns to replace them as missing value, then maybe uh, for more specific columns, you want to choose which column you want instead of all the costs and maybe this function may be a better option. Okay, so this says, the book says that if you discover the problem later that there are missing values, that you can also uh, use this uh, deployer underscore NAE, which also works uh, kind of similarly to uh, this function, but uh, the difference is that you can use it in the mutate with the mutate functions. Like if you want to change the column name and then you can uh, put this as the name of your column and then you want to replace that column with whatever missing values that you want. They also mentioned another kind of missing values called NAN or actually it's called not a number. Uh, however, it's kind of used more often when you do like calculations of summary statistics, like mean or medians or some standard deviations. And sometimes these NANs may pop out as well. So they just represent like things that were not really a number. So they just provide some examples of them. And they said that they, in terms of R, they behave very similarly to the NA object as well. So they provide uh, some examples, like if you try to do, perform some operations, it just gives the same thing. 
if you try to compare them like more than, less than, or equal, it just returns N A N. If you use the function is dot N A, uh, both will appear as true. And they also provide additional functions if need, if there is a need to differentiate them, maybe to identify those missing values that were derived from calculations and those that were truly missing because they're not provided by the collaborator, for example. And this part is the next part, next section of the book, which is to talk more about implicit missing values. So they give a simple data set about the price of some stocks per quarter for the year 2020 and the year 2021. And these are the quarters that we have and the prices of the stocks. So they say that the data set has two types of missing values. So the explicit one is this one over here because it tells you very clearly that on the fourth quarter of 2020, it's the value is missing. However, for the first quarter of 2021, it's not displayed in the data set. So these data sets are considered like implicitly missing. So, uh, so uh, to me, yeah, sometimes it, it, it may be more useful, maybe perhaps from a data harmonization perspective, uh, to make implicit missing values more explicit. So they try to provide some techniques of how you can do that. So one way they they suggested is to use this uh, tidy up pivot wider to uh, to make the years the rows instead of the columns like this. So uh, so they take the names from uh, the the, qu the quarter. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four as the columns and the values is taken from the price. So when you apply that, uh, the years become the column of the rows, and then we can see that the first year for twenty twenty one is missing. It becomes more uh more explicit. So if you use the pivot longer, uh, they say that by default, uh, the values drop NA argument is actually set to false by default. So if you were to do a pivot longer, right? So you can see that the, the NA values will be displayed. However, you can set the values to true to not see any of to drop all these rows if missing values if required maybe for a plot or, or some for other things. The the uh, next we go to this tidy r uh, function called complete that can also help to turn these implicit values to be more explicit, but this time it's based on certain combination. So if it's the same stock data set that we have, but we have it in, uh, we use the pivot wider like, like this. So we have uh, quarter four with missing and the 2021, the, the first quarter is totally uh, not here. And then if you were to use the, complete functions on the column of year and quarter, we can see that it will create a new row that has the first quarter that has the end missing value as well. So it's like another method to do the same thing. So in this uh, case, uh, we can see that sometimes you may want to have data from 2019 to 2021, and but maybe what was provided to you was only from 2020 to 2021, and you may need to like 
joined another data set for harmonization to that has a 2019 on it. So to make this uh, merging more possible, we need to add some like dummy data set, dummy rows that shows that they are missing. So what we can do is that we tidy our complete function is quite flexible where you can add like a new year, for example, and then the the data set for the new for this new year twenty nineteen will be created automatically, so you don't have to like manually key in these missing rows just to merge or harmonize with another data set. So you can see like for the twenty nineteen, we can make them all missing for all the four quarters. And then for 2020, we still is it's still like the same as this one. And for 2021, the first quarter which was missing initially was created with a price of NA. <coughs> Another function that we can use is the anti-join function, which uh, helps us to reveal any implicit missing observation. So here it's how it works is that they use the uh, uh, flights data set. And what I done is that we take all the unique destinations and just take only the distinct one. So these are all the destinations. And then we perform form an anti join with another data set from flights called airports and then they want to join by airport which just have the same uh, column as that's called FAA which is the airport which so they do an anti join with the destinations uh, airport with another data set airport and then what we see is that between these two data sets, the destination flight does not have these four uh, airport information, which that means the airport metadata uh, information does not have any information for these uh, four destination flights from the flights data set. So here is another example of using the anti join. So this time, instead of taking the flights, the destinations, we take the tail number from the flights data set and we take all the distinct ones. So these are all the tail numbers from the flights. And we want to see whether this information is available, this additional in the planes uh, data, metadata, uh, which is another data set, which, and then we can do an anti-join with what we have here with the planes, and we join by this column because it's available in both planes and tail numbers. Uh, maybe it's better if I, uh, let's see, how do I read this? This style of then planes they also have the tail mapper. So these are the metadata that we have like this. So we want to see which flights don't have this information at all. And then when we do the anti join, we realize that 722 of these tail numbers are not present in the planes uh, metadata set. So uh, usually how I would use anti-join is when there are some errors in merging the data set. So this is just an example that I've taken from a blog and I just modified it to be simpler. I think I took it the mod I modified the blog from let me see here. Uh, from oh, I just went to the last page by mistake. Yeah, I, I, I took the example from 
this this page here and I just modify it like because this page gives you more information of what the joins functions can do. So um I we created like three penguins and have their weights and we have some extra rows to join. And you can actually uh do an inner join whereby we can have an error if there's any uh unmatched data. So we can see like to match three penguins with the weights, we have three rows that were unmatched. And if we put it as error instead of drop, we can have like an error saying like there's no match. And then we can use the anti join function to show which of the rows in weight extra that, that do not match with the three penguins. And that may be quite convenient to see what was causing the problem with doing the merging. This is like having like too much weights and we can also do the same thing for those with too little. So this is the same weight that by this time row three is missing. And if we were to do like an inner join between these two data sets with unmatched uh, set to an error, they will give you this error message and we can use the anti anti join to see which of the rows uh, in three penguins that do not match with, with this uh, weak data set that we're trying to merge. So just to take note that you can see that I actually like do a swapping. So the other actually like letters, so it's best to check from the error message like which side was too much or too little and then you do the right order yeah because if you do it the wrong way sometimes it will not display anything and then it might confuse you to see like hey like why this function say there was no match and then when I do anti join they show that there was no results over there so maybe sometimes it's, you might want to check like maybe we did like the wrong side because the order actually matters. However, there are some cases whereby the uh the entire join can't really help. It's like in cases where you have like duplicate IDs like this, where there are two measurements of two, and if I perform an anti join, uh I cannot actually detect that that possibility. However, the inner joy function is actually quite robust and smart. You can actually add an additional function called relationship equals to one to one. There were other function there were other options like many to one, one to many, many to many. But if you use like if you know that they only can have one mesh from both data sets, having this one to one function will give you an error saying like give you more useful information like row two has multiple matches so I, I can just filter to row two and find out like hey where are the multiple matches from and maybe I have to fix that my data set. Of course, uh, more information of this inner joy and tie join uh, is actually from the next chapter. Um, I'm just going to go through these because I just want to show some applications of what the entire join can do. The more information of how the relationship and unmatched could be used can also be taken from this blog as well, which is uh, teaching the tidy birds in 2023. And they will give you more information of how the different joins works. Why is that joined by? And this more information of this one-to-one uh, -one relationship, this unmatched draw relationship, and what options it can provide. Uh, then they will go through the exercise. There's only one exercise in this chapter is to find out some 
relationship between the aircraft carriers and the roles that appear missing from planes. I don't really have much time to do this in greater detail, but what I did is I just take the tail bubbling carriers from the flights data set and then I sort them and then I try to join them with another data set called airlines because the airlines data set provides the information of what the carriers are like for example like this case we have like 9E is a carrier but it doesn't have a name so I merged with this uh, metadata to provide the names for like 9E means Endeavor Air Incorporate and then uh, AA means American Airlines and MQ means Avoid Air and then uh, I tried to do it a an entire join with the planes data set because I want to find out uh, the roles that which uh, uh, tail number did not appear in the planes metadata because if you see the planes metadata there is no area there's only tail number so that's why I add the tail number so that I can do an empty join like this. And then we uh, show all the tail numbers with, with no information that are missing. So these are the carriers that were missing. So as for the metadata of the carriers, I can't really find out more information. So I just take the quantity and state. I know it's not really helpful. But I just use tables to count like how many of the tail number, uh, how many planes are missing that has a that has a carrier from American Airlines. How many planes that were missing from this data set were, were from like the Envoy group, which is MQ. So uh. Yeah, this is what I've done. And maybe some observation is that usually the AA carriers are also mentioned as the last two digits of the tail number. So, uh, but not, this is not the case for all the carriers, actually. Like, like for example, like the B6, which is Jet Blues, they just put the JV, for example. And then there's nine e which actually only has one and there's actually no 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 flights yeah there's actually missing from the uh original data set that's why there was no matches and uh f l and even though they are missing they are all start with a t ends with a t it's very interesting And next, uh, we go to the last part of the section, which is to deal with factors and empty groups. So in this case here, we can see that we have uh, some health information about some people that is generated. And we try to identify if they were a smoker and all of them are non-smokers. However, we set the options are actually both yes and no, and this is their age. And if you were to count the number of smokers that we have, you will actually only give us the number of non-smokers instead of the yes of zero. However, um, we can show that by setting the dot drop function, a uh, dot drop uh, argument in deep account to false so that it will display the number of smokers, which is zero in this case. So why is this uh, application useful? It's 
it's because sometimes when you have a plot them like this, you want to show both yes and no, even though there's a count of zero. So uh, having this drop equals to false may help to display that there are actually no uh, smokers. In this case, they actually use the the skill underscore x underscore discrete they have a drop function as well that has this is able to display uh the yes and no because some people may complain of why some functions have dropped and why some functions got dot draw i honestly i i don't know but some people they don't like it and sometimes i i yeah, just take note that sometimes the drop function parameters may be different. Sometimes it's drop, sometimes it's dot drop. So sometimes they will give you some errors and people may get frustrated about it. And it's just part of the learning experience using Tidyverse. About why is it like that, I have no clue. And uh, these additional applications of this drop or dot drop arguments, uh, this also uh, appears in group by. Uh, so you can use uh, group by the same health data set that we group by smokers, maybe if those that are, yes, we are smokers and no, and not. And if we want to do this without the dot drop equals the false, uh, we can see that the there's no information about those who are, who are smokers. However, if we were to uh, put this argument, we can see that there's some information about the non smoker having zero, but the mean age, these have a very strange values, which may be very hard to understand for people with limited experience of why, why is it not an A, why is it this not a number? INF means infinity and some people didn't know and they thought it's just some bug in the code of the R. So uh so um the book tried to explain like why the mean is like a not a bumper is because when you take a sum of zero is some of the vector which is zero and the length of the vector which is also zero and uh, you get this indeterminate taking the mean which is taken the division of these two zeros it's a lot of number it's quite indeterminate and it's just it's just by default values that max and mean always provide like the worst case scenario like the max if they couldn't find any Values it just take the lowest bumper and mean if you can't find the lowest value it just takes the highest bumper by highest bumper. Uh, alternatively, uh, instead of using the dot drop equals to false in the group by argument, it it tries to find additional ways. Is for example, we can use the Tidy R complete to uh to make it all and is like this. So maybe it's more user friendly and easier to read for, for people with limited data science experience. However, the the NA will be set to or to uh, I mean the for the yes the instead of zero it will be like an A state. So maybe you may want to modify like have another next step to convert those with yes and if the value is an A to to zero instead. So it's easier to read. There's another thing about missing values that recently came out, which is from this blog that tries to explain uh, missing values in a factors, missing values in terms of levels and in terms of values. Initially, I tried to 
create everything and try to reproduce what you was mentioned. However, when it comes to the last part, uh, the data sets for the Star Wars actually have changed and I couldn't reproduce this plot anymore. So I tried to modify some parts of it in this part. But other than the the bottom part for the plots, uh, the top part should be the same. So uh so I just try to summarize what's mentioned in the blog is that NA in factors can be represented as values, which is the default, which is what default is, the default uh, value if you use like factors and you try to do a factor function, the default is x2 equals NA and you will have um, the NA as values. However, uh, what may be not known is that ex the exclude argument in the factors function can also be set to now. And this time, we can see that the NA, instead of being like a missing value, it becomes a factor. Factor, yes, a factor. So, why is uh they because of this right it can have very different behaviors when functions like e dot and a's and s dot integer is used. So for the default um uh, default function of factor default parameters we do set e dot n a we can see that the n a values they will be set to true. However, if we set them as a factor, they suddenly becomes false. And if you were to use s dot integers on this on the default factors, things kind of work as normal as by the missing values of NA. However, when we were to use a s dot integer for when NA is like a factor value, the values become three because uh, usually by default, they will treat NA as always as the last one. So, always the last one. So, that's why you'll have this tree. The uh, book shed, like, why is there like two ways to do it? Uh, because the first method, which is what we are, uh, the default method, is that it's meant to be used when doing uh, data analysis. And for this case, when we set the exclude equals to now, some people might do it because they want to use it in a plot whereby they want to show like, they want to have some control of where the missing values should be shown in the plot. Like for example, in the plot here, the missing values is shown at the top. Or maybe you want to control it to show at the bottom as well. So that's why they turn it into integers like that. Of course, if you don't do that, it will be not be this may not even be displayed at all. It will not be displayed. The missing those groups that will display as missing or empty they will not be displayed in your data set. So it can be quite confusing to control like when. Is going, is it going to be a factor? Why is it going to be a value? So the blog actually highlights that there were two functions in the for cats uh package that helps to like swap the two of them, in this swap them, in swap between like these forms. So the any level values to level is the is to turn the any values from this form as values to a factor level. And this one turns them from factor level back to the NA values. And the block actually tries to show an application of when this can be useful. So this is where it starts to be different because when I try to uh, run the same code, the unknown parameters is no longer present in the new uh, data set or the latest version of that is the Star Wars data set. So what I did is that I modify a bit. So I still take the hair colors, but I add like missing 
uh, uh, group groups that indicate that they were missing, like missing and don't know and just block them. So uh, this uh, goal is to try to plot them such that the highest frequency is on the top and the lowest one is at the bottom and then missing and others will be at the right at the bottom below the least, the one with the least frequency, which is blonde. So they try to do that using the function frequent to do a reordering. However, uh, those that have they were given a value of NA in the data set, they were not stored as values. So they appear in their default position, which is, if you recall, the default position is they're always going to be in the last group. So in this case, the last group is actually the most frequent. So none was the most frequent. So it took me to the last one, which is after none. So in the end, the NA is appears at the top. Of course, there were also other groupings, but we just love them as others because they're only less than two observations. So we just put them as others. So in this case, uh, the question is how do we like number one is merge this NA with missing and don't know together and then try to put them at the bottom. So this is where the these two functions come in. So and so what I did is that I first used uh recall to turn to standardize the do the don't know to missing first and then I use I use uh this any levels to values uh to turn the NAs which has which was in terms of factor form levels to a value called missing. So at this point of the code uh we only have missing and that's it. Uh, there's no uh there's no uh other like unknown or NA anymore. And the interesting thing about the missing is that it works like an NA now. So we convert the NA values to this bracket missing. So we standardize all into NA and then we change the NA name to missing but even though it's change the name, it still works like an NA uh, properties. So because of this uh, change, uh, we are able to put the missing values at the bottom here. Like, like this, where we lump them, we put them together like this. Yeah, and, and I think that's the last slide that I have. Yeah.